Hey guys, this is Tobias. I am a freelance visual effects and motion graphics artist for film and television. And today I wanted to show you a quick tip on uh, how to get a true 3D performance out of Plexus 3 in um, After Effects uh, coming from Cinema 4D using the uh, Cineware uh, plugin. There's a couple of limitations that we need to overcome in this, um, but I'm going to show you the whole process and how to get this to work. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to start with the blank slate, just like I always like to do here. Uh, so and that way you guys can see me make mistakes along the way if I do uh, make any. So we're just going to go ahead and get rid of this, and we'll start from uh, scratch. All right, so let's just go ahead and create a, a simple scene here. We're going to have a, uh, a center sphere, sort of like a sun type deal. Uh, with a couple of objects around it and uh, we want to get one of those objects into After Effects uh, and being you know sort of engulfed and surrounded by a plexus uh, sort of object so we'll just call this our center we'll create another one uh, here we'll call this the orbiter yeah that's spelled right Okay, now the orbiter is going to go around this here, so we're going to add a little path, line to spline. Uh, just got to click the tag, put the spline in there. There we go. All right, now we can animate this uh, position here. I'm going to just make our timeline a little longer here, so it's not too fast. Uh, we'll just start the keyframe there, and then 100% at the end. I know. We should get that. All right, cool. Let's make our orbiter a little smaller. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're also going to duplicate this. Uh, let's name this here our path. This is our orbit path. This is going to be our camera path because we're also going to an animate a camera here. This is the part that makes it, uh, you know, kind of truly 3D uh, for Plexus. Uh, so camera path, we're going to create a camera. And again, we're going to align to spline. That camera path is going to go in there. And uh, we are going to need to adjust how it's pointing as it goes around. So we need to switch on tangential, and then we also need to uh, switch it to the X so that when it goes around it's always facing our point of interest which is going to be that center uh, sphere there. Um, let's go ahead and make this camera path uh, quite a bit bigger so we're quite a bit of a distance there and let's go ahead and take a look in there. Right now it's not going to look like much uh, obviously we need to animate it. So let's do zero position and then at the end of the timeline 100% and we're not really going to see anything because we're all in the same perspective here. So I'm going to take our camera path and bring it up. We're also going to bank it or pitch it, I should say, and tilt it a bit, maybe 20 degrees. Okay. You can see we need to make our, uh, our path a little bit bigger. Ah, we need to have a target. That's the problem. All right, so target the camera to the... Uh, our center object, right? So we're always looking at it. There we go. So now we got some, you know, nice camera movement, and also the object is uh, moving the orbiter. All right. We know that by turning off the camera and just taking a look here. Well, we want our orbiter to go the other way, so let's go and go into this and change this to 100%. Redo that keyframe, and then go to the end change this to zero so it goes in the opposite direction okay all right there we go that's more like it all right just to make this a little more interesting we'll add a few more objects uh, nearby the center here so let's go ahead and add a couple of platonics and we'll drop that into a cloner uh, make this radial make that really big Make it to uh, X Z, so it's lying, lying down. We're also going to take our platonic and make it quite a bit smaller. All right, and uh, let's just add some randomness to this, just for visual interest. Uh, random. There we go. Okay, we probably could 
use a bunch more too. There we go. Wider there. Yeah, something like that's good. So now we got something that sort of shows us what's going on there. All right, cool. All right, so yeah, simple scene, no big deal. Um, let's say our objective here is to uh, we we're told to get add a plexus uh, object around this uh, orbiter object uh, in After Effects. Well, that sounds great. Um, so we know that we can import a Cinema 4D scene. So if we were to save this, I'm going to save this as a copy because I don't overwrite the first one. Uh, just this be version two. All right. So now we save that, and uh, theoretically, all we have to do is go into After Effects and import this uh, Cinema 4D file. It will read it, create a new comp from it. And uh, we have this, the Maxon plugin immediately recognizes everything and brings up the software render, and we can actually see what's happening uh, in here. Um, but we weren't actually looking at our camera when that happened. So let's just do this again, refresh the file. There we go. Okay. All right. So what's happening here is that this is actually just linked to the Cinema 4D file, right? It's not, you know, you can render it in After Effects, but. I don't really know anybody that does that. It's just way more efficient to do it outside of After Effects. Um, so you've got all this. But when you hit Extract, all you get is the camera. And even then, if you pay close attention, you hit U, there's no keyframes on this camera. So if I were to add a Plexus object to the scene and say, put it in that area, and then try to animate it. Since my camera doesn't actually move anywhere, I don't really get any anima animation, and my Plexus object will not really be truly 3D as far as its behavior. So what do we do here? Um, we need to create a proxy that's going to sort of follow along with the sphere that After Effects can read. Now the only thing that After Effects can read as far as the Cineware plugin is cameras and lights from Cinema 4D. So what we'll do is we will go into Cinema 4D, and we'll create a light and we're going to add this light to this uh, orbiter right make this a child of that orbiter zero out the coordinates so that it's actually there right if we press play you can see it follows along as it's supposed to with the uh, the orbiter right but we need to get keyframes on this. So how do we do that? So the way that we do that is we go into our uh, timeline, which just go to window, uh, timeline, dope sheet, okay, you select your object. Now by default, uh, Cinema 4D is not going to have this show animated under show unchecked, so you need to uncheck that, otherwise you technically won't see the objects in your scene that do not have animation on them. Uh, so, for instance, uh, when I select this light, it wouldn't show up in this because there's technically no keyframes in this unless I uncheck that. So, what I want to do is I want to select that light in the timeline and go to functions and I want to bake this. So, what it's going to do is it's going to read its behavior and actually convert that to keyframes. So, it's uh, position, rotation, anything that's going on. Um, now, we don't actually have rotation on this, so I'm just going to leave it at position. And it'll make a copy, and we'll just go ahead and do this. No, that didn't work. Because there's actually nothing driving the motion. It's on a parent, right? So we have no keyframes on this light. So how the heck do we get this in to, uh, to After Effects? Well, there's a couple of ways to do this. We can either recreate the, um, the spline tag on this light, so we could say just bring this light out of that. I'll show you both ways here. One of them is a little bit easier and the other one's a little bit more complicated using Expresso, but they're both going to work. It depends on what you want to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, we can actually probably just duplicate this uh, tag here. Okay, so first of all, let's go back to our view, make sure everything's still hunky-dory here. Coordinates, yeah, recenter. Coordinates here. So we should have the same behavior, right? And we do. So the light is behaving in the same way that the orbiter is. All right. 
great, but we still have no keyframes. Right? We do see that there's motion there in the coordinates. So let's go back to our timeline, select that light again, and now there's that actually something driving the motion, and it's not just a child object. We can click on this, and now when we do the bake, it should write keyframes, and that's exactly what happened. So we got a copy here that doesn't have the tag on it, and it's just the uh, just the keyframe. So that we, now we got our motion from that. I'm going to go ahead and rename this uh, to Plexus Light, just so we know when we see it in After Effects what we're working with. Now, you also note that the camera itself has no keyframes on it, other than the uh, the tag keyframes, which are what you're seeing here in this uh, dope sheet. These two keyframes are actually the line spline tag. We don't want that. After Effects can't read that. So again, we're going to do the same process with the camera selected, functions, bake objects, um, rotation position, we'll just do all that, it's fine. Okay, so it created a copy for us. Uh, we're going to look through this camera. I'm going to call this uh, cam baked. All right. I'm going to go ahead and save our file, control S, and let's get back into After Effects and uh, right click on this and reload footage. Okay, now we'll go into our comp. We'll delete that previous camera that we extracted from it. And now when we go into uh, the Cineware plugin for our, our file, we hit extract. Now we get our cameras and all of our lights, right? Well, now we're only, we're only interested in the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the baked camera and the Plexus light. Now if we hit uh, U on these, you'll see we actually have keyframes now. Right, so this reads as an After Effects camera that actually moves. So now we'll be able to get Plexus to understand what the motion is that's going on in this scene, and uh, we can also attach Plexus to this uh, light. Now I'm going to take one extra step here that I did not mention before, and uh, that is to import an OBJ object. Uh, now I created just an icosahedron uh, sphere uh, from Cinema 4D, just as a static object to uh, bring into Plexus because um, just as a personal preference the the Plexus object Plexus sphere object uh, has poles on it and that really drives me insane um, so I just you know I just created a uni uniform uh, shaped uh, sphere which is this uh, icosahedron so it just looks better in Plexus so uh, what we want to do is uh, let's go ahead and add Plexus now to our scene here. So we create a solid and then we look for plexus and add it. And uh, we could probably just dock this uh, right there. This is the uh, plexus 3 uh, object panel, which is really handy because it helps us work in, in layers. So we're going to add our uh, geometry as an OBJ. And in version 3, uh, the way that OBJ object works is that it doesn't import from an external file, it just imports from a layer. So you, you bring in your OBJ, if it's an OBJ sequence or whatever it is, and it kind of brings it in as a uh, image sequence almost. And uh, well, exactly what it is. And then you just drop that in as a layer in your uh, composition. And that way when you go to the uh, go to Plexus, you just tell it that uh, the layer that contains that is the the object. So right away we see we have uh, our Plexus object. I'm just going to bring these points up so you can see those. It might be a little small. Uh, just for the sake of this video, I'm going to make this really kind of ugly, uh, just so you can actually see it. Um, let's go ahead and add a lines renderer as well. Uh, bring those up, it up, up quite a bit too. Okay, so now no, there's no doubt that the Plexus object is there, but it's obviously uh, it's not really interacting where it's supposed to be. It's um, it's going with the camera, which is great, um, but it's not positioned where it's supposed to be. So we want our Plexus object to be uh, parented basically to this light that we brought in, this Plexus light. Now here's part of the problem, and this is a this is not unique to Plexus. This is an After Effects thing. Um, if you go into the parameters, the transform parameters. Um, the way After Effects does it is that it separates X, Y location as a single uh, dual parameter and it brings out Z as a separate uh, single attribute parameter. Not sure exactly why they do that, but they've, it's pretty much been like the, that for all time <laughs> in After Effects. 
this does make things uh, really annoying when it comes to animation though um, when you're trying to work with uh, 3d stuff so anyway what we need to do is we need to put an expression on our plexus object to uh, match it up uh, so all we do here is we go to our XY and uh, I'll click the stopwatch and this gets us into our expression window now um, I'm just gonna click away from this for a second and uh, hit the tilde key just to get a bigger screen so we can see uh, everything more clearly here so we, we need to have our plexus light position open up and available to us and we have our field here ready so we we'll just click back in that field and uh, it brings us up the the name of the object uh, that we're working with in uh, Plexus, and what we're going to do is start typing dot x to get the uh, x parameter, which is this first number here, and we're just going to grab this little uh, lasso here and bring it up to our x position x position for the uh, light. It's going to fill it in as our transform position zero. And we need to put a semicolon after that, and we're just going to copy this entire line bring it right below but we're going to change this X to a Y and we're going to change this transform position to 1 because the transform position is actually an array uh, inside of After Effects so we're just telling it you know what position you know 0 1 and so on um, that we're looking for now since we are working with an array here we need to identify what is X and what is Y in relation to 0 and 1 and the way that X after Effects is going to understand how to do that is at the end of our expression here we have to do this uh, bracket x comma y so it knows that these are variables that we added to this object right I know that sounds really heady but it works okay so we click away and it works but now we still have the z location so we're going to do the same thing here and uh, we're just going to drag it right to this z on the light okay click away and now we've got everything is uh, connected so now you'll see the plexus object is actually attached to that sphere that we mentioned before, right? So uh, what it's actually attached to is the light, which has the keyframes on it, um, and that basically is how you get animation in from Cinema 4D on an object that you wish to be associated with plexus, um, and you can do this for for multiple plexus objects. You just keep adding them, uh, you know, even uh, the primitives and whatever else it's going to have in here, you just have to follow that that uh, process, uh, and just be very careful of your names here. Like in this case, I have Plexus Object OBJ Object um, in uh, quotations here. As you add objects, uh, their names are going to change, so you need to make sure that the, what's in here is correct, along with this number that. Uh, Plexus is going to assign to the objects as it adds them, and you just basically use that expression uh, to tie those in. Um, so I'm going to leave it up on the screen for a second there just to show you that. All right, and then uh, the other way that I wanted to show you, uh, like I said, it's a little bit more complicated, but it might come in handy for for uh, other other situations. Let's say you have. Uh, a light that's on an object and you don't want to do it uh, this way that I showed you here so let's go ahead and uh, bring this back uh, so let's say you know we we don't want to use this tag we have our light but we want to associate it with uh, you know any other thing that's going on so uh, we might have some other kind of system going on um, you know, say we have like a third party, you know, Arnold light or something going on in there, and we want to attach it to that, you know, whatever's going on with that. So, one of the things that you can do um, is to say, let me just go ahead and put a tag on this here just to align this to spline. This is our orbiter. Okay, so let's say I did have keyframes on this. Uh, I realize this is redundant. This is just an alternate method, and uh, I'm only showing you this because you know it may be more relevant to a particular project you're working on. I don't know, but it's up for you to decide. I'm just trying to give you as, as much information as possible to allow you to make the decision that, that you want. So, like I said, forgive me that it, it is redundant in a way. All right, so we've got uh, our Arnold light. Let's take this off. We can't see our Arnold light in there. Uh, I mean, it's 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 there but I mean uh, 
C40 doesn't show us uh, Arnold objects, really. Uh, okay, so I did attach that to the orbiter, didn't I? But it seems to not be where I want it to be. What did I miss, guys? I was talking and I mix, mixed, missed something. Orbiter path. Yeah, dummy. Orbiter path, not the object. That's pretty funny. All right, all right. So now it's actually doing what it's doing. Okay, great. So uh, now I know that After Effects is not going to be able to read this. I'll save this file to bring it in. You'll do the extract. After Effects is not going to read anything, but cameras and lights. Great. All right. So I have this light. Uh, you know, I want it to be the same as that, but maybe I don't want to use tags. So this is how you do it via Expresso. Bring up an Expresso window. Bring in our Arnold light. Okay. Uh, control click to expand that. Uh, we're going to bring our regular C4D lights. And what we're going to do is go into the global matrix, which is basically just all the positions X, Y, Z put together and uh, the rotations as well. Um, and bring it into the light global matrix, right? Arnold light, C4D light, global matrix. It's just reading basically whatever's going on in uh, XYZ scale and rotations. Uh, this whole matrix here will drive this light. And uh, so if we play, you can see there used to be a little light over here somewhere. Uh, the Cinema 4D light, it's gone. Now it's actually in inside that little sphere there. Okay. And then, um, so now we actually have basically parameters, as you can see. That are being animated, but it's driven by Expresso rather than a tag, right? So you're just tying it to that object. So from here, it's the same process as far as the timeline is concerned. You just grab that light. Here's the light. It actually has movement on it. Um, make sure that your view is, you know, not showing unchecked to show animated, so that you can see objects that don't have uh, keyframes on them. Go to functions, bake objects. All this stuff is fine, and there we go. So we have the same thing. We've got our light again. Um, we just hide this one, and uh, this actually has keyframes on whatever's being moved. Okay, and uh, that gets you the same result that uh, After Effects can then read. And let's hit tilde here. And so from there, like I said, um, you can animate to your heart's content as far as how you're this object is going to be um, if you have it following objects or uh, offsets or things like that but you want it to follow a very specific animation um, and also have you know your camera be correct as well um, okay I think that's it I, I know that was uh, maybe a little long for a quick tip but uh, that does show you how to get things done um, and part of the reason why that's important is that if you're not rendering from your cinema 4d file um, say you're bringing in you know, renders that you actually did, you know, all this stuff will line up correctly. All right. And uh, there you go. All right. Any questions, leave them in the comments. Good luck.